Assalamu folks, just heading back from the masjid this morning in the village and I thought I'd share a quick story with you. So as you do every morning, you wake up to an annoying alarm clock, I reach out to punch it and instead on the bedside cabinet I find a bag of sweets with some chocolate and a brown envelope. Ooh, and on it, in my daughter's handwriting, it says, to the best dad ever. To the best dad ever. What? Folks, I don't know about you guys, but I'm not my sharpest at Fajr. Just try reading that again, quickly, with your Fajr eye, one eye open, one eye closed, and a mild form of dyslexia. Did she just call me a bass? <laughs> Of course not. That's just a child trying to say I love you and I'm sorry because she got a telling off yesterday. And that's the way they express love. Now, mums and dads know this. When a child does that, she wants something. What about you guys? What do you need right now to make you feel loved? Do you need some of this? No? Maybe some of this. Okay, then what about this? Some of this? How about this? Okay, folks, so you're probably wondering why is this guy asking me private and bizarre questions about my love preferences? Don't worry, let me put it into perspective. Love in parenting, what's love got to do with it? Well, essentially, love and connection are essential for building and maintaining healthy family relationships, especially when we have children involved. Now, this is why Islam places heavy emphasis on love towards your creator, love towards your Rasul, uh, love towards the deen, love towards your family, starting with your parents, to your spouse, and then to your children, and love to the rest of the creation. And we are instructed to build a strong foundation and emotional connection with our children in the first seven years, the formative years, because everything after that is built upon that foundation. Depending how strong that foundation is, is how secure our children will be in later years of their life. Did you know this, that how we give love in our adulthood is largely defined by how we received it in our childhood? So yes, the home and the interaction or the relationship between our parents is the first place where we learn what love is and how to exchange it. So I have a couple of questions to frame this tutorial. Do we understand or see love as a language? If so, do we see our preferred language? Do we know our preferred love language? And what about the love languages of our loved ones? Do we speak to their love language? And um, do we share the same love languages or are they different? So these are a couple of questions that we need to unpack and take a step back from our parenting and see if we consciously are aware of the different languages and are we fulfilling their rights of uh, our loved ones. So folks, put it simple, different people with different personalities have different ways of giving and receiving love. And it's not one language. There are multiple languages. And in the opening section, I just showed you five examples of them. This tutorial is based on the work of Dr. Gary Chapman, whose famous work of the five love languages is absolutely essential for every parent and every parent to be, to know, understand, and practice in order to strengthen their relationships at home. So I'm going to, in three steps, show you how to discover and understand your preferred language of love, as well as the language of love for your loved ones. So once you discover your language or your preferred language of love, we need you to go and teach others around you to do exactly the same. And ultimately, it's about speaking to each other's love languages and practicing what you know in order to strengthen your home and strengthen your relationships if you want to raise confident and resilient children and secure children. So in this tutorial, I will walk you through the five languages, the do's and the don'ts when it comes to parenting and marriage. Now, if you shorten time and you want a quick fix and speed ahead, 
you can go to this site, fivelovelanguages.com. It's a site that's actually uh, uh, administered by the man himself, Dr. Gary Chapman. And you can go in there, you can get the link in the description and just take the quiz. It'll take you no more than 10 minutes. Honestly, you're on your way and you can find a lot of resources to work around it. But if you stick around, I will show you how to implement the five languages with some parenting tips inside of your home. And inshallah, I will draw on my own personal experience with my children and my wife um, to be able to share uh, that experience with you. And we can take it from there. Uh, right here, let's get down to it. As a parent, what will you benefit by um, knowing your love language? So let me simplify this by learning to recognize uh, these preferences in yourself, first and foremost, and then your loved ones, I can see four examples or four benefits where I think you will, uh, inshallah, be able to benefit by knowing your love language. Number one, you can learn to communicate better. Number two, inshallah, you will, you will be able to connect more profoundly with your loved ones, also enhance appreciation. In other words, grow closer with your loved ones. And last but not least, which I think is really essential these days, is to be able to manage conflict by identifying the root of your differences. So there you have it, folks. There are the four reasons why I think um, you should take a love language test or a quiz for yourself and for your loved ones. And uh, inshallah, to make it simple for you in this tutorial, what I'm going to do is I'm going to break it down into uh, these three or four sections. So we look at each love language, how to communicate it, what actions or tangibles that you can take to express that uh, language, and then also things to avoid so that we don't have toxic communication or toxic parenting or toxic love, uh, which you know is harmful. All right, because um, you're not speaking to the love language otherwise. So that's that. Um, let me run through the five love languages very quickly. Firstly, we have languages of the words. So these are words of affirmation, um, you know, affectionate comments, uh, descriptive praise or encouragement. Number two, we have love language um, of service, so acts of service which children value and they see as meaningful or you're re removing uh, a burden from people's shoulders, um, responsibilities on their plate, you're taking them off them. So that's the love language of service. Then we have the love language of time, spending quality time, which is focused and uninterrupted um, at, you know, attention or time with your loved one. And the fourth one is a love language of gift. So this is giving and receiving gifts, which are, you know, undeserved gifts. So you're giving these unexpectedly and gifts and gestures that you make that express your love. And last but not least is the language of physical touch. So this could be easily examples of hugs and kisses and uh, a pat on the back. Uh, we largely know this kind of language because we usually express love with intimacy if it's in a uh, marriage. Um, with children, obviously, we can show that through affection, um, uh, affectionate hug or a cuddle. So these are the five love languages, folks. Now, very quickly, before I move into the each one of them, um, the common question that usually is asked is, um, can we have more than one love, like, one love language? And the answer is yes. You can receive love from all five love languages. Uh, but we are actually looking for your preferred one, your primary love language. So there's always going to be a dominant love language that we all have. Um, we may have one or two which are, you know, dominant ones. That's fine. It's perfectly normal to do that. And connected to that question is another question. Is that can, is a language for giving love and receiving love the same or different? And it depends. Sometimes it can be the same. So you can be a person who likes acts of service. That's how you give love. And you also expect that back. So, you know, you expect that from others, what you wish for others, what you, uh, what you wish for yourself is what you wish for others, as the hadith goes. And so in the same way, you expect the same back for yourself. Alternatively, you could be someone who gives love in one way and receives in a totally different way. That's totally fine as well. For example, you might be someone who gives acts of service um, to people. That's the way you express love. But you, in return, don't want that. You don't seek that. Instead, words of affirmation might be something that you're looking for, i.e. a thank you or a gesture to just uh, acknowledge and value what you've done for people. So in, for, uh, in a nutshell, folks, there you have it. That's the five love languages from a snapshot. So how do we live these languages at home with our children? So I'm going to run through the five love languages with some tips now. Firstly, words of affirmation. 
So you have uh, spoken words, or you could write written cards and letters, just like my daughters did with the post-it note. Um, so I, uh, my, my eldest, whose language is words of affirmation, it's good to write, you know, um, post-it notes or sweet notes that you can leave in lunch boxes on the bathroom mirror or put them in the coat pocket so they can discover it when they're at school. And the most important thing here is about verbalizing their successes, celebrating the small wins, you know, recognizing um, the wondrous attributes that they might have or the qualities they possess and just acknowledging them, either spoken or written. And so it's about encouraging words, compliments and affirming spirit. Um, really empathize with them, compliment them, listen actively, um, say I love you regularly, uh, praise them perhaps in front of other people because it's about value and recognition, um, and be specific in your praise and mean it. Now what you want to really avoid with this love language is um, any harsh words, uh, emotional damage or undue criticism that could be taken quite badly, um, just not recognizing, ignoring them, neglect, not recognizing the or appreciating the effort. Um, so this is a real uh, important one because it's sensitive. Okay, so acts of service is a second love language, which is quite simple because it's tangible and you can see it uh, in action. This is about assisting with um, chores or duties or responsibilities and taking them off someone's shoulders, just letting them know that you care and you're aware that they've got these responsibilities, but you want to help them. And um, really it's about them knowing that you're with them and there to help uh, as and when you're needed. And if it's done you know, unexpectedly, it means a lot more. So typical examples could be making and serving them their favorite meal, helping them practice uh, their sport or engaging in their hobby, uh, doing their homework for them or with them, not for them, with them, <laughs> tucking them in at night um, is a common one and uh, well-liked one reading to them a bedtime story, X, Y, Z, you get the gist. Um, really, the way to communicate this is to ask, what can I do for you? Or I will stop by and get the groceries. Um, today, I took out the bins because I know you usually take this out, but you're very, very busy. It ju it's just empathizing and it's just showing, you know, uh, love in, in a way that they uh, value it. Don't make promises that you can't fulfill. So you want to avoid this act that where you make promises or you overcommit to a task that you can't deliver on and there's no follow through this is really annoying for people who value acts of service and see it as a love uh, and certainly don't ignore them and these are the things to watch out for for this language the third one is quality of time now again this one is an obvious one because it's about running errands uh spending one-to-one -one time going on walks that could be just sitting face to face at home Doing things together. That's the most important thing here is about giving undivided attention, uninterrupted time um, spent or attention spent with your loved one. And it's a case of leaving your devices, I'm trying to find my phone here, leaving your devices off the hook, put them face down and spending one to one. Unfortunately, this is a big problem today that we're sitting side by side and we're not present. You're not living in the presence of the other one. So um, really the best way to communicate this is, you know, quiet places with no interruptions, undivided attention and one-to-one -one conversations. What you want to avoid here, especially with your children is um, if they want one-to-one -one and they're seeking quality time with you, then don't dilute that by spending time, uh, too much time with others or working in a group um, format. So that would be a big problem. You need to recognize your child who needs one-to-one -one and otherwise that would make them isolated and you need to be aware of that. Um, also be aware of the long gaps in time between meetings because that really makes a, a big, it means a lot. Be on time to meetings that they need you to be. So if you're doing the school run, be on time. And if you're coming home from work, like if you're a working dad like me, then it's really important that you fulfill your promises and um, you know be on time. And uh, receiving gifts is another one. Okay, so this one again is an uh, obvious one because uh, gifts are tangible and we give and take. Now, this doesn't have to be expensive gifts, okay? The most important thing here is about the thought behind the gift, the thought counts. So this is gifts and gestures that show that you are known, uh, loved, and cared for. That's what they want. So giving thoughtful gifts and gestures, small things matter in a massive way, big way. So express gratitude when you know giving or receiving gift. Um, and so uh, you wanna really be careful of 
materialism, like I said, you don't have to always go out and buy the most expensive gift. My daughters who have this as their preferred love language, right? It's not about an expensive gift. Honestly, it's about the simplest things that matter to them in a timely fashion. And uh, it's about not forgetting that special event, whatever that is. Um, okay, so that's uh, number four. And number five, finally, physical touch, which is an obvious one and that we all think of when it comes to love because of intimacy, um, you know, and that could be hugs, cuddles, pats on the back, as I mentioned before, validation, uh, physical touches. Uh, and it doesn't even have to be physical. You could actually just be sitting close. In other words, you don't have to have contact. You just can be sitting close next to your loved one. And that, that's what counts. So um, here, largely speaking, it could be actually mostly nonverbal use of body language, facial expressions, um, just to emphasize love, okay? And um, what you really want to be careful of, and there is a line when it comes to physical touch that some of us sometimes, you know, unintentionally can cross, and that's physical abuse. So abuse or neglect of any kind is a no-no. Just be very careful. For example, folks, you know, you don't mean to hurt the other person, but you're playing with your loved one or your little one in boisterous play, and you hear laughter, and then slowly after some time, you hear someone crying. Okay, siblings do this quite often. You'll hear them playing away, laughing away, and then all of a sudden one starts crying. Why? Because physical touch went from affection or playful activity to something that was harmful or boisterous or, uh, you know, it was quite um, a push comes to shove, for example. Um, so just be very careful. And obviously punishment threats and neglect that we've just mentioned there avoid that when it comes to your ch children and your loved ones so that's the five in a nutshell um now as i mentioned you can go here to five love languages.com to get the quiz and it's no more than 10 minutes 30 questions but stick with me because i'm going to show you um a breakdown of those uh, uh questionnaires that you can fill in now there's three main ones three main categories you as an adult if you have teenage children, then there's a teenager option. It's a slightly different version of the survey. For you, it's quite simple because there's two options. Um, you just got to choose between two choices, you know, 30 questions, and it'll be cross-checking different um, questions and criteria. So you might have repeated questions that sound the same, but it's quite straightforward. Um, so you and your teenager children can do this independently. Where the issue uh, lies is actually children of a younger age. So you could either take the quiz for your child but let me show you the age categories. There's nine to 12. And I, in my experience, nine to 12 can actually independently do this. It depends on the literacy levels and how they understand. But certainly you being in the background supporting them is the best way um, rather than taking it for them. But where they need help, you can help uh, and interject. Where you will need to take the lead is uh, for children eight or younger years. And this is because they struggle to verbalize their love language or articulate. And so um, the, the way to do this is number one, I think you should take the test for yourself and familiarize yourself with the questions. And then when it comes to your children under the age of eight, so I have a child who's under the age of eight. And what I did was take it for myself and um, use pictorial diagrams and you know, different ways, um, artifacts to be able to work out the different choices to see which uh, one she prefers. And that allowed it, um, me, allowed me to look at, um, you know, using an exercise with her to confirm what I thought was her or validate what I thought was her love language. So there you have it, folks. It's an excellent activity to get, do together as a family. Uh, it's worthwhile investing that time and putting that time in and you will inshallah ta'ala thank me later and by the way my one of my preferred uh, dominant love languages is words of affirmation um the other is acts of service so please do leave a nice warm comment in the uh, um in the comment section below that would mean a lot to me and the way you can show love to our organization is if you could kindly share this tutorial with all the parents and the parents to be that you know that would be a great help in Sharatala. Spread the khair. If one family can improve their relationships between themselves and learn about each other's love languages, that would be a great reward for you and our organization. Please don't forget to leave a comment or a question, like our videos, subscribe to the channel if you already haven't. And until the next tutorial, I'm leaving you with lots of love. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.